Hello and welcome to Efficient Strategy Gaming. Today we're going to be continuing my Road to 1000 Subscribers series where I just play whatever I fancy and uh, we go from there. So today I'd like to play a new Germany build and I'm just going to kind of try to break the game here. So we're on Elite Iron Man mode with Historical AI. Let's get into it. My last video, we beat the US, USSR and the Allies by 1939. What if we can do better? I saw this video the other day, um, and it's one of the top ranked videos uh, on YouTube of Hoi4. And it was basically like a guy uh, playing as fast as he could, and in like 28 minutes, he uh, conquers France, Poland, and I think the Allies, and he basically uses paratroopers. But my thinking is, can we do better? Can we do better than the paratroopers? Um, some thoughts here. We could take just Belgium, and then basically get around the Maginot Line that way. I wonder if that's possible. That's going to be tough because I think they have a big fort right here. So we could leave the Netherlands alone. However, if if I just took the Netherlands and I had this huge, you know, line right here, we could still just uh, declare against the. Uh, we could still declare war against Belgium and take Paris. It wouldn't matter. And I believe that. The Netherlands offers a lot more military factories than Belgium does. I'm not sure on that, but I think so with all the updates. So, and I did have a a commenter say like, "Oh, I've tried go I go ne uh, Netherlands first. No one guarantees them. Then I take Poland out. So let's let's try to theory craft here. Let's try to do it. So first we'll go with a quick setup." See what we got here. Let's get all the infantry. This guy needs to be in with Guderian. Student. I pe I pick Kurt Student over here because of his excellent supply rating. And then if you haven't seen my other videos, Guderian always goes right there on the spearhead orders. Get some of these guys down south. I really like um, Witzelbin because he has a decent supply rating. And uh, he's an infantry officer, so I like him for kind of a mountain army, if you will. putting mountain troops in here. I give him the mountain troops and then I use him like if I want to invade Italy, for instance. Okay, then of course Monstein is my fortress buster pick. So there's a couple of fortresses here. And Rommel. Let's see here. We'll go up here at the top. Perfect. So Guderian will go with Klug, who has Panzer Leader. And then the rest will go with Runestead. I'm not sure who's better, Model or Runestead, but you know, Runestead has the offensive doctrine. Organization loss while moving negative fifty percent. And Model doesn't have that. And you know it. In real life, he was mainly used when Germany was on the defensive. 
Of course, he was he came up the ranks while Germany was doing their blitzkriegs, but he was mainly used on the defensive when he was a field marshal. In terms of our research, which is oh so important, so let's go crazy here. Westby first. I think that the Westby first build is the best, in my opinion. Sometimes it's hard to build, like, to pull off the Westby first build, though. You really got to be keeping your eye on a lot of different things, like how many Westbys am I producing, etc., etc. It's got to be just right. Oh, and then in terms of production. All mills. All the time. Since we're going to try to declare war early, well, I don't think I'm going to get... So if I go for the Netherlands, what resources? I'm going to get seven iron. That's probably not going to be enough when I go free trade. Okay, let's upgrade... Mosland. I think that's our highest iron production. And that'll give us plus 18 iron, so that'll be well worthwhile. Okay, so we're going to have this to begin with. Yeah, and I don't think I'm going to produce anything else. Um, we're not going to do too much support equipment. We will need Toad Anti-Air. We'll put everything else in there later. I heard one uh, guy on YouTube say, why do you start with the end toad anti-air? Because you'll never... N why do you start with two military factories and toad anti-air? Because you'll never need to build any other type of anti-air for the rest of the game. I thought that was well, well put. God, they have so many factories to begin with. Like, that is so many factories. And two more. Hmm. Let's go with the guns. That just seems like so many factories to me. Let's go some like this. The Navy, to me, is just so annoying to set up because all we're going to do is hold the Baltic. We're not going to do anything with the Navy until we're ready to get across to the UK. Let's see how these are split up. I mean, this looks fine. I'm not going to deal with it. I just need to move over. Let's 
Boehm, and then Salawaka. Okay, and now we will know where to put these guys. That's a lot of U-boats. Oh, the Adm Admiral Hipper class. Forget. Max B-29. Max B-26. The Panzer Schiff, that's the pocket uh, battleships. I'll just put them in the new fleet. Austin. Maybe I shouldn't. These are the old school things, aren't they? The old school ships. Let's put them in with Hush. All right. And then the other idea was, what if I did a build where I don't use the focus trees? But, I mean, you have to, to a certain extent. Like, I could get wars here really quickly. I mean, I got to take advantage of this. My thinking is that I'm going to piss off France so much that they have to attack me. So maybe we'll try to go down to here. We'll do full Anschluss exploit. go group the air up together and we'll turn off all this stuff because we're not going to do it should I extend the MIFO bills or not well we're going to declare war here early against everyone so let's just let them fall off since they're gonna fall off anyways no war goal to justify a war need one more political power to do that okay need 48 more political power all right so the question is, I think I want to do this after we get our first, after we get Rhineland, because it'll be so much cheaper. Okay, then these guys need to be spread out. And then we need to be making sure that we're building troops. So for those of you who haven't watched me do this before, I'm using the space bar to control like when I can get these units out. And you try to stop at midnight, like right there, and just produce the units. Yes, it does matter. Just doing that a little bit. And then... After the units are put out, we're going to make them motorized uh, divisions because that gives me the most 
um, manpower that is in the field. So my infield manpower right now is 279, but after I just change those two um, cavalry divisions, which are easier to train, into motorized divisions, uh, I'll get a huge boost to my infield manpower. It's easier to train the cavalry divisions because they require less equipment overall. There are less men to hand guns to, basically. And that's why I do it. So there's going to be a couple of things to look at here, but is it still going to be 50 for me to justify? Yeah. Okay, so I'm looking at political power. And I'm going to try to get these divisions out on time. So not very exciting, but this works. This method works. I've done it a million times. And when I say, like, we're going to go full Anschluss, that means that I am not going to, I'm not going to do another focus tree badge until I do Anschluss. So there will be a time in which um, I won't be using a focus tree. And then hopefully I can get down to operate uh, around Maginot and Operation West Rubung. I can get down there and then stop building focus trees altogether and see if that doesn't give us a boost. Okay, if I justify a war goal now, it's going to be 250 days. So what we want is world tension to increase. So I'm just going to ignore this. What's going to increase world tension is when I go Rhineland, which will basically show the world that we're breaking the Treaty of Versailles and um, yeah, people will be afraid, world tension will, will rise. Okay, so we got the West Bay. Why was I, why am I no longer getting troops in here? Let's get the West Bay out. And then the cool thing that you can do with the West Bay is um, convert from stockpile. So I'm making these light tank twos, I'm, and then the Panzer ones are in my stockpile. You can see that right there. I have eight Panzer ones to convert, and they cost so much less when you just change them into SP artillery. Conversion speed 200% with the cost of one tungsten and one iron. So that, the speed is higher, the cost is less, resources needed, um, one iron instead of, what is it, three or two? One iron instead of two, one tungsten instead of zero. So you can pump those out very quickly. Okay, next thing we need is a functional army. So we go for weapons and equipment upgrades. Where's all the equipment going? Hopefully it's not going into these divisions. It could be. They could have changed that. I didn't do the oh, I didn't prioritize this. Oh man. That sucks. So Anchelos is gonna come a little late. I forgot to set these priorities. Okay, so we got Rhineland. No big deal. We'll still be able to do Anchelos in a fairly timely fashion. Free trade first always, because you get those modifiers there. Ten percent to factory output. 9% to research speed. Yes, sir. And then we're going to wait until I can do Anschluss. This bar is going to fill up after 10 days, and then basically um, we're going to be behind on our focus trees. 
So we have 50 political power after I got free trade. So that's another reason why to wait. If I justify a war goal now, 240 days. Let's see now. Oi, 240 days. That war goal is going to come after I get Poland. Let's math it out. 70, 70, 140, 210, 240. You're going to get it at the exact same time. So there's no point in declaring war against the Netherlands. Like, who else could I just nab up here? Could I go France? No. It's going to be 240 days until this increases. So let's see if it increases to a point where it's worthwhile. But I doubt it. I would doubt it. Maybe after I do an Anschluss. Everything in this game seems to be like predicated upon the Germany focus tree. And that's why that war goal takes 240 days because they're forcing you to kind of go Poland first before anything else. Actually, what am I doing? Why am I trading for iron? I don't need to do that whatsoever. That's all used on ships. I don't really care. So I'm not going to be able to do Anschluss yet. I only have 368 troops in the field. I don't want to touch these division templates that I already have. Just try to get these guys out as soon as possible. So this is going to be quite a slow Anschluss. Uh, fast one would be early April. So it will be probably late April. We'll see. Need 100,000 more men? Radio. Almost there. We can modify the government again. I think instead of going for political power, since I'm not going to focus on my focus trees, I'm going to wait till I can go war economy. Uh, world tension is still the same. Yep, so it still should be 240 days. The whole deal with Anschluss and like why it matters to get it earlier is there's a ton of military factories in there, like eight or nine, I think. The faster you can get those, the better. There we go. Now we can do it. May 10th. So, kind of slow. It's okay. Give these boys over to Rommel. G. 
just in case I'm able to take out Netherlands. I'm going to put them over there. And we're going to continue to produce troops because we still want to meet the qualifications to go Danzig or War. going on over here region-wide in industrial integration adding one building slot I, I don't really care about that okay we're insufficient that's fine insufficient resources that's okay I'm waiting for world tension to increase so that I can go war economy. Always go concentrated industry first or dispersed if that's your fancy we're looking for 950 manpower in the field 950,000 see if we can get there with this if not I'll just create more Okay, so we get Anshalo straight down to reassert Eastern claims. The Schnell division goes in with Guderian because they're fast. And the rest go in with Witzelbin. You get this Austrian kind of uh, just kind of a lighter division and they just have uh, infantry equipment and support equipment, which is an engineer, uh, a support engineer regiment. So, yeah, they're good in mountainous terrain, and they're also good uh, for filtering in your support anti-air. So I like to use this template to build off of to make another template. It'll just be AA. Give them that and then change this so that I don't have to produce more support equipment into the anti-air that you saw me produce at the beginning of the game. So we make that down here and we can change divisions to that or we can just simply produce them. It doesn't matter. Should have plenty of people in the field now. I love putting the squeeze on Yugoslavia because it's a free war goal for me. Oh, we're up to 14% world tension. Whoops. 230 days. Wow. Let's see if I can go war economy. So watch this. So when I go war economy, let's see, the MIFO bills might be modifying. Okay. MIFO bill payments. I thought they should have fallen off. Consumer good factories, 20% will be... So that's a penalizer a p uh, penalty because I didn't pay for the MIFO bills. Will be re removed August 29th, 1936. Okay, so we should have less factories than we do. Civilian factories, we only have 10. So now let's modify the government to war economy. So we have 10 civilian factories, and now we have 14. Not that, not that great, but in August, we're going to have a, a ton more. Not sure if that's the best way of doing that, but I like to get the MIFO bills over with because we're not going to be taking 
Czechoslovakia and doing all the sorts of stuff like that. We should have enough in the field. I can change these 10 divisions into AA. from here if I win army innovations I go mobile warfare doctrine I kind of lean on the side that that's probably the way to go so after army innovations go mobile <laughs> warfare doctrine I guess this is a little steep it would be nice to get more iron. If you go excavation one, uh, it'll mainly increase your iron by like 50 or something like that. I'm not sure. Fuel gain from oil. I mean, I don't want to do this. 460. One days. That's atrocious. I could get into war artillery or I could just wait. I think I have 30 days until it matters. Yeah. Let's see what happens. It's looking like we're just going to go the normal build. I mean, we can justify these war goals all we want. It's not really going to help us uh, get to a European war any faster. A European victory. I don't know. So that video that I saw uh, must have been way, way before, like, Waking the Tiger. So we'll have them move back across. Penny packet these guys out. Not that they need to. The MIFO bill payments are gone, and voila, we got a lot more civilian factories working for us. Let's get these guys out. modify the government again let's just go for pure tactical efficiency here just like see what we can do so I guess I'll go for that but begrudgingly So we only have 82 to make up. That's fine. Should be fine. We should still qualify for Danziger War. You don't want the manpower in the field to drop below 950. Mamel folds. Let's see what we get. One civilian factory. All right. It's fine with me. Oh, shit. Got two unassigned divisions there. Okay. 
The no template's going to be the Wespy. And all these deficits mainly are going to be air power, which we should have enough of. And you have enough at the start of the game. And then um, naval industry, which is just a joke for Germany because they're so good on land. You want land wars. That's what you want to focus on. See, and this is why it's still 225 days to declare war. Like, this is why it's better to just go through the focus trees to get your war goals. Like, it is kind of cool to, but to just, like, declare war on your own. But really, it's not practical because, I mean... It's going to take too long. It's going to be faster to just start World War II from the focus tree goals. So. And that's what you run into in this game. Okay, we got ra uh, radio, so we're going to be very efficient in the field. God, what do I go for next? This This point of what to go for next always vexes me because we're not going the doctrines. I always go mobile warfare doctrine, but doing this without mobile warfare doctrine is probably like a huge mistake. I'll just go ex excavation because we're going to need iron to build tanks and guns. Just do it. Let's Check this out. Let's do something like that. Ooh, that's close. These uh, mobile infantry <laughs> divisions are practically use useless when the war kicks off because they don't have any equipment. But, hey, they qualified me for this war goal, so I don't really care. Okay. 17% world tension. Still 225 days. That is crazy. Okay. All right. Other thing they need to change is why do I have to keep clicking this button? Like they need to make this game like more automated. So you're not constantly switching screens and having to worry about little things like that. So I can't go Rommel because I didn't go army innovations, but I can go Guderian and he is land doctor and research speed is improved and the max speed of armor is plus 10%. So my tank divisions in theory should go 12.2 kilometers per hour. Whoopee. Let's see here. Is, is it, it's 10%. That should be 2.2 more. Am I right? No, it should be 1.2 more. So they should go 13.2. Unfortunately, it doesn't show here. I wonder if you go to the actual division stats. The actual division can only go 10.1 kilometers an hour. Oh, that's because they have the Panzer 1s. But it's still, the modifier doesn't show up here. That would be nice if that, ha if that happened. Put these guys on orders. They're going to be the patrol fleet. 
and then the Kriegs. It's going to be the Strike Force. Get some convoy raiding here, and the Baltic is going to be all sewn up. Around Maginot first. Okay, all these guys should be ready to go. I'm going to try to conserve. Oh, I didn't upgrade any of these guys. Let's do that real quick. <laughs> Scavenger plus three percent equipment capture ratio, and that's really not going to make any difference. We've got 55 command power left, so we're going to have to conserve that. Let's turn everyone on. declare war is something that you can do here is you see they're all in entrenchments you can wait till they shuffle a little bit before you attack that works really well a lot Get the overrun over there. Let's see if we can do crazy stuff here. Darn it, there's someone in Warsaw. Okay, I'm gonna need his help in Warsaw. Back to a Krakow. They retreated into it. Damn it. Just get to low, it'll be fine. Right, we got Warsaw. Rest the Tosk. We need to get to that next, the big fortress in Brest. these forces back up again. I don't want these guys to get over it. So after we get into Grodno, we should be good to go. All right, and already I know that, you know, this build is not gonna work. not going to be able to do this faster um, because I can't declare war and actually get the war goal before I can take Poland and before I can go around Maginot. 
I mean, I guess at this point, I could declare war. I could justify war, rather. Right off the bat, as soon as I get 50 political power, I could do that. And then at this point, after I take Poland, boom, I could like take out the Netherlands real quick. But the Netherlands is guaranteed. So as soon as I do that, um, the UK is going to bring their forces over, you know, the UK is going to bring their forces over, reinforce everyone. France could guarantee and then spread their forces out around the line as well. I don't know, guys. I don't know if you can do it faster than the way I've been showing in my videos. So if you guys have con you know ideas, please uh, post them down below. Like I don't know how to do the Germany build, the Germany speed run any faster than what I've already been doing. So I'm going to end the video here. Thanks for joining me, guys. And uh, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.